because of the nature of the ministry, it demands that you talk and you speak. That's the way he introduces this matter now. Hmm. Verse number two. For in many things we offend all. In many things we offend all. In many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. If there is any man that does not offend in word, in speech, that man is a perfect man. If there is anybody who does not offend people in word, in speech, that man is a perfect man. That's what he's saying. <laughs> and yet, he has already told you that for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body, which means the man that is able to control his speech. That same man as well is able to control his entire body. Is it possible not to offend people? In word and in speech, is it possible not to offend? And if you are able not to offend anybody in the way you talk, it means you have obtained power over the entire body. You can control your body. And what is to control your body? It means to take your body anywhere you desire. Which means you can't be in a poverty-stricken territory. You can move your entire body from that place to a prosperous place. And that can only happen when you are able to control your tongue. Which means it is your tongue that is taking you places that you don't like. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me show you something here. Let me show you something. Do you know the... the, the the person that I know, the most perfect personality that I know is Jesus. Right? And if you look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 22, it says, Who sinned not? And guile was not found in his mouth. There was no deception in his mouth. Jesus never committed sin, number one. And in his mouth, deception was not found. Guile was not found. Lies were not found. Jesus. He's a man that was able to speak. In one of the Gospels, there is a scripture that contains a report of the men that were sent to go and uh, spy on Jesus. 
And when they came back, they were now giving a report and they said, guys, that man, there is no man that speaks like him. Which means this is the most perfect man that we've ever come across. Perfect in speech. And also, in another instance, we see John's disciples coming to Jesus to ask him whether he was the real Messiah or we had to wait for another one. And then Jesus said, go and tell John what you have seen. And when they were gone, then Jesus said, blessed is the man that is not offended in me. Which means in as much as Jesus was perfect in speech, he would still offend people. And that's the reason why he was crucified. So it doesn't matter how good his speech and his presentations were, he would still offend people. So if the Bible is telling us that if any man is there among you who does not offend in word, he's a perfect man. Is he talking about not really offending or there is a class of people that you should not offend? Because, because, because in, in trying not to offend people, what else are you going to talk about? Any sermon that you can preach on, if it is about love, you can still offend some other people. Because there, there, are, there are people in there who doesn't want to hear anything again to do with that name, love. Talk about heaven, you offend a particular group of people. Talk about marriage. Oh, oh, oh. So there's nothing left really to talk about if you don't want to offend people. And yet the Bible is saying, if you don't offend people in word, you are a perfect man. And then how can I do that? Because I don't want you to embark on a, a mission that is impossible. Is it possible not to offend people? And then the Bible says, if you are able not to offend people, it's talking about people. <laughs> it's not just, it's, we are not just talking about offenses here. There are people that you should never offend. And there are people that were, even when they are offended, you have not really offended people. Now, they, 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 they. Listen, listen to this. Because there are people that are already offended even before you can say anything. So you should never be afraid to offend people that are already offended. There are people that are always angry before you can do any achievements. Imagine you do somebody. If you really want to look around, there are already people that are bothering you at your level with the little that you have. Already they don't want to look at you. They don't want to talk to you. They are already offended before you can offend them. Those are not the people that I'm talking about. Those are not the people that, that we're talking about. So, uh, sit, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. Ah. If a man does not offend in word. He's a perfect man. And James, James could not be talking of that if it is impossible. Which means it is possible never to offend. In word.
And yet you can say certain statements that might offend people and yet you have never offended anybody. Talking about people. <laughs> if there was no guy in Jesus' mouth, why were they angry when he was preaching and teaching in their synagogues? Which means though there was no guile in his mouth, and yet there were people that were offended, those people were not really considered as, as people in this case. They are people and they are people. Okay? If you are going to seek to please everybody, you are going to die young. Okay? Never should you attempt to do that. And most of the people that are coming into your life right now, it's not like you have offended them in anything. They came into your life already offended. They had issues that they were dealing with. Angry with life. Now. And then he's saying something here. In verse number three. Behold, we put beats in horse mouth that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. You see a horse. And you look at the back of the horse and you know that this horse can take me somewhere. And yet that horse is not willing to take you there. And because it is not willing to take you there, you have to put a piece of metal not at its back. Listen, the reason why you want to travel fast, that's why you are riding at the back of the horse. And the horse is supposed to use its legs to take you to that place. And yet you don't control the legs. You have to put something into its mouth. <laughs> 